Skylum has released a bunch of exciting new extensions for its AI editor Lumina Neo. I want to take a closer look at the panorama stitching tool and the new AI denoise feature. For those of you not aware, Lumina Neo is more oriented towards the beginner audience with its powerful AI tools. Now let's create a panoramic picture. Keep in mind, these extensions automatically became available for existing Lumina Neo Pro subscribers, but they can also be bought as a standalone package. Also, if you're new to Lumina Neo, the UI can be a bit confusing at first, but don't worry. We are starting by adding our photos. You can add a single image or a whole folder to the catalog. Since we want to create a panorama, I'm choosing a folder. In here you don't see much, but I know my images are right here in this folder, so all I want to do here is to choose this folder. The photos will then appear in the center. Let's choose the files for our panoramic image. By the way, to follow along, you can download the raw files as always from the link in the description of this video. Hold down the control key, then select the photos. Although the panorama extension does not strictly mention it, you can also merge HDR panoramas. So as you can see with these images, I want to create an HDR panorama. Once you have selected all the files, drag them over to the panorama stitching extension. And then click on start. Lumina Neo automatically detects it's an HDR sequence. And all you have to do here is to just click on continue. Lumina Neo will merge the images for you and this feels a lot faster than with Lightroom or the Camera Raw editor. Now a huge feature which I really really miss in the Adobe software is the possibility to adjust the panorama. In Lumina Neo you are able to drag around the image until you get a proper result. For example this way you can precisely fix the horizon right away. It also offers more projection methods than Lightroom does. And changing them happens instantly, so it's much much faster than Lightroom. I also want to mention, you can see we are working with an HDR file. Lumina Neo will automatically adjust the exposure. I think they look good and natural, but as far as I'm aware you don't have any control over the adjustments the software applies. But again, it's more beginner oriented, so that does make sense. Once we're happy with the image, all we need to do is click on continue and we can start cropping the image. You don't have to fix gaps like he right here in the upper right corner, but there is no such thing as a content aware fill or a boundary warp to fill those gaps. And again, once you're happy, just click on crop. Now let's do some editing. Just like in Lightroom, you will find all the adjustments on the right side. The first thing I want to do, although Lumina Neo has applied tonal adjustments already, I want to bring up the exposure. So we can find that in the develop tab. Here you can do the exposure adjustments, but also apply curves, color like white balance or saturation, sharpness, noise reduction, and so on. So what I want to do is to slightly bump up the exposure. And I also want to increase the white balance temperature, giving this shot more warmth. And also let's bring up the vibrance, making it more saturated. Nice. Once you have done adjustments in one of these tabs, you can close it. Now reopening it, you can see the adjustments are gone. That's because once you have set up one of these, you can find it under the edits menu up here. This was highly confusing to me at first, but once you know about it, it's really really useful for a better editing overview. What and in which order was done to the image. And here you can also reset that if you want. However, let's go back to our tools. Now I did mention it briefly, but my favorite feature in the Lumina Neo editing software are the sun rays. You can find these under the creative menu right here. Let's click on them. First, we want to place the sun center. Click on it and here you can see a little knob. I'm going to place it over the sun, obviously. I want to bring up the amount, making the sun rays visible at first. And I'm also going to play around with the overall look, making them a little weaker maybe. Actually, let's bring down the sun ray length. I don't want them to cover the whole image, so 
I want to just cover the left half of it. And we can also play around with the penetration a bit. I think that looks good. Now the sun rays to look good, the problem, however, is the sun itself. It's glowing way too strong, but don't worry, we can change things under the sun settings. We want to bring down the sun radius, making the sun itself a little smaller by doing this. We can bring down the sun glow radius as well, reducing the glow effect. And also let's bring down the glow amount. That's looking much more natural. But we can further tweak things with the ray settings. I'm not sure if I want to drop or increase the number of rays. Let's drop them. And by randomized, we can choose a different orientation of those sun rays. So just play around with that. I think that looks pretty good. However, it might be a bit too weak. So I'm going to bring back the sun ray length and the overall look. All right, that's fitting quite well in this scene. At this point, the sun rays are a little too cold to fit in this image. But again, we can adjust that under the warmth tab. So what we want to do is to just raise the warmth of the sun and obviously also the sun rays. Let's push it quite a bit like this. All right, awesome. Still not happy how this looks, so I'm going to increase the penetration here, making them a little more visible this way. But you can see you can have a lot of fun with the sun rays. Another thing I do want to add is I think I want to make use of the relight tool. With this you can kind of change the light of a scene by making the foreground a little darker just like I like to do in Lightroom creating some kind of vignetting effect and bringing this slider down and thus just make the foreground darker. You can also make the areas further away a little brighter by increasing this slider and just changing the light situation. All right, let's see what else can we do. I think I want to apply some split toning. This can also be found under the creative tab here in the toning menu. I have to say the split toning in here feels a little too strong sometimes. Also, we don't have the midtones. We just have the highlights and the shadows. So what I want to do is to start with the highlights and first in Luna Neo, we have to bring up the saturation. I don't want to raise it too much since as I said, this feels a lot stronger than it does on Lightroom. And I want to change the hue, giving the highlights more of an orange color tone, just like that. I think we can actually bring up the saturation a notch. All right, wonderful. Now, at this point, the shadows do look a little bit too dark. Let's change that. We want to head back in the develop tab and I want to go into the blacks and whites and just raise the blacks here. Just introducing a softer look overall. Okay, I'm quite happy with this. However, I don't like how warm the right side is. I want to apply a mask. So again, I'm clicking on develop and what I want to do is to drop the temperature. I'm going to make this a lot colder and I'm just paying attention to the right side of this image. And once we have this set up, we want to just click on masking, choose a linear gradient, and then I'm creating one like this. And now you can see it is only applied to the right side. So we have a really cool effect with the warm left side and the colder right side. Uh, I think we're not done. I do want to head back into the essentials and here we have a landscape tab. What we can do here is to add some golden hour light, which I think is really helpful. So let's just do that, increasing the golden hour light a bit. Looks so much better. And finally, I do want to enhance this image some more by adding glow. Therefore, in the creative tab, we have the mystical tab. And yeah, I just want to bring up the amount slightly. This will add some very, very nice glow. I do think I want to bring down the shadows, making them slightly darker again, adding some contrast back to this image. And let's see, maybe we are going to increase the smoothness. So check this out. I'm going to deactivate the mystical effect. So we went from this to this. 
This looks really, really good, but there is even more glow. So let's head into the glow tab itself. And here we can choose between soft focus glow, ordinary effect and ordinary effect soft. Let's choose the later one. And I'm going to just increase the amount a tiny bit to add a really good looking art and glow effect. So as I said, the editing is really, really simple, aimed towards beginners, but you can quite dramatically change an image. So we went from this to this. And the editing really was not that complex. Let's stop editing this shot for a moment because I want to show you another thing. As I said in the intro, we want to take a look at AI denoise extension as well. So I have edited this shot earlier this month using Lightroom's AI denoise, which worked quite well. I have applied some simple editing on this shot in Lumina Neo as well, and you can again see some quite heavy noise in here. Let's see what Skylum's AI denoise will do to this image. This can be found under the extensions. It's not magic light, it is noiseless AI. So let's click on that. Lumina Neo is suggesting the low setting for this image, so let's just give it a try. Just like in Lightroom, this will take a while, but again, this feels a lot faster than in Lightroom. Now at the first glance, right here you can see we still have a lot of detail left. Let me deactivate this effect so you can see the difference from before to after. The fence right here still looks super sharp, so that's great. And the overall noise situation got a lot better. However, right here in the darkest parts, there are still a ton of hot pixels. I don't know where they are coming from, since they were not visible in the Lightroom version, I think. And the darkest parts are still quite heavily noise ridden. So I want to change the setting from low to middle and see if this changes anything. I would say it did get better. Still the sharpness is remaining up there in the fence. All right, so let's try the highest setting. And unfortunately we can still see a little bit of noise just in the darkest areas. But I think overall this extension is doing a great job at fixing an otherwise unusable image. You have to keep in mind, even with some heavy denoising, the image still looks super sharp. And that is very, very important. All right. And that's it for the tools I wanted to show you with the new Lumina Neo software. As I have mentioned a few times throughout this video, this software is aimed more towards beginners who don't feel that safe editing images in Lightroom or Photoshop. This is really a great tool which makes editing a lot easier. And I have to say, I wish Adobe would include some of those panorama stitching features. So let me know what you think about this software. Do you use it yourself or do you have any questions left? Feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.